So I've arrived here at the Kara tribe on the border uh, with South Sudan. I am uh, just off the road in South Ethiopia and I pulled off to the side of the road because I want to show you these large termite mounds that these termites, uh, they build vertical. So these, they're, they're absolutely massive. Look at this. And you can see uh, they just make different formations. So everywhere, everywhere you go, see, I don't know if you could see that one way far in the distance, but I'm at another little vertical one. Um, this one's pretty interesting. These are the termite mounds of South Ethiopia. Absolutely stunning. You can see the dried river bed where a river once once uh flown through here you could see most of the area is all dried up here in the border of sudan there have been droughts in recent years um there is no water here not a speck of water even though the dirt is a little bit wet um you don't really there's no flowing water whatsoever all you see are these craters that have been made where water once was um, that's probably why you don't really see a lot of life out here. Um, the only thing I saw were traveling baboons, a, uh, a few cattle herdsmen, some traveling baboons, some cattle herdsmen, these termite mounds, which are a plenty. You can see them just kind of scattered about everywhere. Uh, but that's about it. It is, um, it is desolate. Not a lot of life to be sustained in this part of Ethiopia and uh, it's incredibly hot. The sand flies are, are, uh, are really are biting the hell out of me and buzzing around my ears. So we're gonna get back in the truck now and continue our way. We're gonna go see some tribes in a village called Kara. And um, yeah, this was just a quick pit stop because I saw all these fascinating termite mounds and wanted to share them with you all. So we're gonna get back on the road and on to the next thing. See you guys. This particular village is about 3,000 inhabitants. They're at peace. And the, the, as you can see in this village, there's a mixture of traditional homes, traditional houses, traditional huts. This village in particular contains a school, a bar. It has a doctor's office. Um, we're actually sat on top of a hill. I'll show you some of the landscape, landscape now. I think I've kind of gotten lost here, but I'll show you some of this beautiful landscape. At the bottom of the hill is a river. Look at these little ones. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> Just walking through here, you can see the vast landscape. that exists. In the opposite direction is South Sudan. The Kara people are known for their body painting, face painting, they jump bulls. We're gonna meet some of the, of the locals, maybe go down to the river. These small children may not know it yet, but this is a shrinking land, both figuratively and literally. This distinct tribe of a few thousand members share the eastern banks of the Omo River below with at least 13 other distinct ethnic groups. While most are at peace with each other and work out ways to share grazing lands and water from the Omo River, it is not always so easy, especially in the face of a larger state government that wants to quickly modernize and use the land and water for industrial plants. This can put these tribes at odds with one another. 
and some are more weaponized and stronger in sheer numbers, or have managed to even semi-assimilate into larger urban communities where wealth can be generated for both old and new worlds of their particular groups. Damming the waters that feed the Omo River lower its levels, and groups such as this are forced to relocate or attempt to survive by giving up their native cultures and moving towards a more urbanized life. If they are not projected in some way, this video will contain some of the last images of the last generation of the Kara people of South Ethiopia. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.